Hi, everyone. My name is Diane Gordon, and I'm a freelance reporter. And without further ado, the cast and director and creators of Dropping the Soap. Let's have everyone. Let's have everyone introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Ellie Canner, and I'm the director and one of the executive producers. Hi, um, my name is Kate Mines. Uh, I was brunette in the show, you know? <laughs> uh, and I'm uh, an actor, obviously, and a creator, EP, whatever, everything. <laughs> Hi, Paul Witten. I'm an actor and uh, creator, executive producer. Stop. I'm Jane Lynch, and I did the craft service. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I'm a producer as well, in, in basically in name only, though. They did all the work. Not true. Not true. Our, actually, our actual craft service person is here. What's that? Hannah is oh, here with actual, actual, craft <laughs> actual craft service. Yeah. Our actual craft service person. That is support. <laughs> I didn't think you'd be here. I'm sorry. For, she did the craft here. service. Hannah did the craft service. Busted. She was amazing. It. There you go. If Jane, you need Jane craft helped. service no. for any Jane of helped. shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jane helped. I helped, though, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. And that's one thing, before we start, that I would like to say, is if you feed them well, and you give them great craft service, which you provided, people like John Michael Higgins and Missy Pyle will come, because we're all 100%. about the food. They always say yeah. that yeah. a company runs on their stomach. Yeah. So if crafty's good, people show up. So this is good. Wow, that's devotion. That's really nice. And can you guys talk a little bit about how this idea came to mind, and wh why did, I mean... I think I understand why you picked the soap opera genre to parody, but can you guys talk about it, how it came to be? Well, uh, Kate and I actually met years ago doing a workshop of a play that was bad and <laughs> became really good friends and we decided we that we were teenagers. <laughs> now we're clearly in our 20s. Um, <laughs> uh, and we wanted to work on something together and so we got a group of friends together, one of which was the actor Michael McKitty, who's wonderful, who plays her brother and several other people and started trying to brainstorm what the story would be about. So about two weeks later, I was in bed having a nap, which is often where you know, I have good ideas. And um, I thought, let's make this a behind the scenes of a soap. Because I had my SAG card. I got my SAG card doing an under five on General Hospital a long time ago. And uh, I just thought it would be a really fun art form to skewer. And because it, it's kind of a dying dying art form, we thought it would be really fun. Since there's kind of circling the drain, you know, there's only, I think at the time there were probably 10 soap operas and now there's three, maybe four. Was it also enticing to do the show within a show? Oh, 100%. And, and <laughs> I think those are the most fun to shoot because it's so ridiculous. And you, you want to be, as you know, as actors, you want to kind of commit to the reality of it, which I think makes it even more fun because it is so ridiculous. And, and Kate, please tell us. How did you come up with the name Kit Knockers? So I didn't come up with that. Mandy came up with that. Uh, I just uh, have the knockers to pull it off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do you it. You do. <laughs> Ellie, how did you come to the project and how did you wind up directing it? Um, I came to the project through uh, Paul and a mutual friend, Dory Zuckerman, who was our casting director. And um, she showed me a little uh, like sizzle snippet, yeah. snippet that they had done and I was like, this is funny. This is what I want to be working on. How do, I, how do I talk to Paul and get involved? And Paul had come to a screening of Authors Anonymous, a movie that I had done, uh, directed, and produced. And, he, and we just met. And, and then I met with Kate and, and Mandy. And then Jane was like, great. And it was just, it was, you know, it just sort of, we were all on the same page. And we just sort of, it, it sort of took over. And, and we, I jumped in and we, shot within like three months yeah i think like once we raised the funds yeah. i think it was really like, fast yeah. it just happened really quickly yeah. and jane did you get involved just because you're friends with everyone yeah well i was friends with paul and um uh i saw the sizzle reel as well and i thought it was hilarious and and i said i you know i would love to be a part of it um did i start with the money first uh, <laughs> 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 i didn't One really money. I, I i helped i helped with it, something in the beginning and then I said well now that I've given you a little bit of money I'd like to be in it 
And he went, okay. <laughs> we wanted to help her out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice of you. I, uh, believe nice. me, it was that, that much. Um, but anyway, when he, uh, you know, I, it, was, it made me laugh. And I said, if I would love to be in it. And then he created Olivia Vandersteen. And I stole the part from Mandy, who had, uh, was going to play it. And then she was actually glad to be relieved of it. Yeah, our co-creator, uh, the creators are myself, Mandy Fabian, and Kate Mines. And that's who we're referring to when we say Mandy, who is not up here um, today. And I, she's still alive. It's, you know, she's alive. <laughs> she's on. Mandy is alive. She's great. She's in great shape. She also plays fun. the makeup artist with the oh, red hair yeah. Uh, yeah. that's in the show. So. And I'm just curious, because you're all sort of part of, you know, a very vibrant comedy community in L.A., because um, clearly you drew in so many of your friends to work on this. Um, did you guys come up through Groundlings or UCB or Second City or any of the others? Uh, any, any of the others? I mean... I know you're past with the Christopher Guest true. Right, so John Michael Higgins. I, I didn't ask him, though. You asked him. I think, actually, I think Ellie or yes. Dory had yeah. something to I do with Dory John Michael I, Higgins. Yeah. Yes, and he was like, oh, my God, again, saw, you know, heard who was involved and just was so funny. Thank you. And so it was also pretty, <laughs> it was pretty It was shocking. great about his scenes, too, which uh, he was surprised because I showed, I showed him before we actually put it all together, is you used Almost everything. He thought, oh, they're going to cut 97% of what I do. Nope. Because he just yeah. went, uh, as you remember, he went, uh, did you see the whole thing? Uh, yeah, he went on, on yeah, You and saw on. the first three episodes, right? The third. So he yeah. was in the third. Yeah. And that was a pretty long, so we, it was just all gold. So you kept it in, which I thought was um, very smart. Also, just with everyone, like, we literally just asked. And it's like, they didn't do it for the money, believe me. You. So <laughs> everyone, we were just sort was of like. Was there any money? Well, exactly. There, there was no what money. What money? Um, <laughs> yeah. It was like, you know, whatever, SAG, new media, minimum, or whatever. But everyone just said yes and was down to play. We were like, come hang out with us for a day. We'll, we can shoot you out in a day. We'll feed you well. It'll be fun. Because Diedrich Bader, uh, he worked a little bit more than a day, but Diedrich and John Michael Higgins and Missy and basically everyone. Y you have a lot of familiar faces in this. Yeah. And to me, that's always really impressive when people can just say, hi, come play for, and, and you did it that quickly? You just shot them in a day and that, that was Most it? Most of them. And then I have to give a shout out to Jillian Armanante, who yeah. played my assistant, Melanie, who is so amazing. Yeah. And she, you know, she's she got a pilot. She's on a show with your former cast member, Leah Michelle. now. I think that got oh, picked yeah, up yeah. fresh the off the boat. She works all the time. And she came in some days literally for us to walk down a hall alongside me. She was such a trooper. And I mean, she got her 125 bucks, but you know. <laughs> but she doesn't need that. You know what I mean? She also like, came in like a couple of times remember she was, she was supposed to go to a wedding and she got rain, like a, there was a storm, blah, blah, blah. So she just came in and was like, hey, I'm not in anything today, but I'm here hanging out. So if you want to throw me in something, I'll work. Yeah. She and was like, awesome. She, she did do that. Makes such a great, and as the series goes, I don't know how much you know, but there are 10 episodes. So there are seven we put them all together for you today, but there are seven more than what you saw. So she's in more and she's just wonderful. But those actors that we were so lucky to have that showed up and again, Nadia. you know, Nadia, Nadia. Bjorlin, and they, they showed up for no money and just because they liked the show. And, and Patrick awesome. Fabian. Patrick yeah. Fabian. Yeah. Is Malcolm Mary. Well, wonderful. He's yeah, he's with sleeping with the writer. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're married. There's no sin involved. And sometimes that's I didn't do cocaine. My nose is running. I don't know why. And I'm sorry. I mean, this morning, I didn't do it. And Ellie, <laughs> and Ellie, as you were directing, since these episodes are basically eight to 10 minutes apiece, what, what, was, what did you take away? What was the directing lesson you took away from directing these shorter episodes? Basically, the most important thing was to allow them to do what was instinctive. I mean, the script was there. They're so funny. They're so, they work so well together that a lot of times it was like, stay out of the way. And then uh, little tweaks here and there, but, and it was also just, um, just having fun, like lightening up the set, making sure everything was running smoothly and making sure everyone got what they needed. And uh, yeah, but the biggest lesson is just listening and, and having fun and being present. You know? Because when you have so much talent, does it become more of a, ta does it become more of a challenge when you have to edit it down? That's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that would be yeah. a real challenge with Which, you Which, again, I, yeah. I have to say, Freddie De La Vega, who is our editor, who came Jillian onto this project, who Jillian turned us on to, um, was so wonderful. We had some challenges as a low-budget production 
that he absolutely helped us cut together, I think, a really funny, successful um, show. And we were, uh, Ellie and I were in on that every day, and it was intense. But yeah, we killed some babies. I was going to say, was that tough? Because oh, you guys are hard. funny, and I would think, it's hard when you have to like leave laughs on the cutting room floor. Yeah, or something that's funny, like there's actually a reaction later that Kate and I both love that happens between uh, my character and the woman who plays my wife. And we both really wanted to keep this particular react. I think we all loved it, but we wanted to, we had to get rid of it because essentially it undercut what was coming next. But it was actually yeah. our first choice. And also there was just a couple of moments where it was like, you know, the, the, cause because of the camera work or because of something else in the shot, we, did, we couldn't always choose the best take, unfortunately. So like, which is frustrating as an actor when you're like, oh, but I was so much funnier in that or Paul was so much funnier in that. And then you just can't use it because continuity or whatever, there's like a million. And so like all the things that you don't think about as an actor that you have to look at as a producer can be, I mean, can be kind of heartbreaking actually. Yeah, and we always tried, I think, uh, to, go performance-based as much as possible. But there were times where you just couldn't because you know something dropped down into frame yeah. right at a key moment and ruined my take. <laughs> but he's not bitter. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I also realized that, that sometimes when that happens though, it, it just ends up being what it's supposed to be. Yep. You know, somehow like at first you're like, oh, I don't want to lose it. And then you sit and you watch, you're like, that was the right thing to do. Yeah. So that, that is a very laissez-faire attitude that you don't usually hear from directors. It's very zen. Well, and I have to I, do that, otherwise Ellie, I'd be really mad. Yeah. Ellie is, I, I, you know, and close your ears, because I don't want to get a big head, but she was the best at setting the tone on a set. I think we would all agree. Like, what she said of letting people just do their work was so true. So she kind of was a ringleader, but she knew when to go, okay, Kate, Paul, slow down, you know. <laughs> Did, Did you ever hear else, the words, do I have to separate you two? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah, I would say the relationship you see of us, of us on the horse in episode three is a pretty realistic interpretation <laughs> of, of, our, of our sibling rivalry. So. <laughs> Who well, sat there? And it's together? funny because when we first started, you know, uh, when we first became friends, we were like, oh, we love each other so much. We're going to be besties on the show. And Mandy, who's the primary writer of the show, Mandy Fabian, again, um, she was like, that would be a hard no. You're going to be enemies. And we initially fought it. We were like, no, I think they, and she clearly won and had the right choice. So, Not even frenemies, enemies. Not yet. Maybe season two. Season two. You already think a true producer We're already think ahead <laughs> season two before we forget tell everyone where they're going to be able to watch the entire series please uh you can see it on amazon and uh, it's on amazon so throw it on your watch list we'd love a review too this is grassroots so again i'm sorry but if you if you do watch it and like it we would love a review from you uh there itunes google play and a streaming service called deku which is primarily aimed towards gay men, but I don't know your life. Maybe you have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Alex. Also, just oh. like speaking of that, any like social media shout outs are great. As you, I'm sure there's some other people in the audience that are making their own work. So, you know, at dropping the soap at everything, follow us, retweet us, talk about it. Who came up with that. the title? Michael, Michael McKitty. McKitty. Who plays her brother? We were at a coffee shop in Los Feliz eating really bad food, and he said, "Hey, man, why don't? Well, let's, what about drop the soap?" And Mandy was like, "Dropping," and we we're like, "Hmm." And that became the title. And nobody, nobody brought up the prison. Yeah. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> well, I usually what That's I said, I'm like, it's not it prison on there, porn. Uh, <laughs> actually, I, I, they weren't sure. They, they misinterpreted For the title. Sure. They had no idea what they were getting. And then they saw this workplace comedy, kind of like 30 Rock. And they're like, where's all the gay? So you'll be doing some press in Lompoc near the prison. Is that what you're telling us? Is what? You'll, be some, you'll do some press out in Lompoc near the prison. Is yeah, that oh, what you're telling us? I we'll would, do press yes. anywhere. <laughs> Kate, you're such a trooper. <laughs> and Jane, I'm just wondering, um, you have worked with uh, so many different talents, you know, in your career, 
And what made you want to do this particular project besides seeing the sizzle reel and liking it? Kate Mines is so good looking. <laughs> Thank you so much. And no, you know what really check is, is in the mail. And, and continues to be and has, has been and always will be is who, who am I, I'm working with. And, um, uh, you know, I've, I've been at this a long time and I didn't get paid for the longest time uh, for it. I did it because I loved it and continue to do it because I love it. And uh, I, I do it because of the people, you know, I, and I love these people. And I thought the writing was just top notch. Um, and the whole, the whole, well, the experience was good. I didn't know that going in, but I certainly had a strong feeling that it was going to be. And one of the things that I'd like to give you a shout out here, Ellie, for is um, that we, she shot the soap opera uh, show exactly as you sh soap opera. It was lit that way. You know, they light in a certain way. And then when you go backstage, it's a completely different style. It's more handheld and, and a little more um, uh, frantic. Whereas the um, soap scenes are a lot of masters and then close-ups. And I mean, there's kind of a style to the, uh, to the, the soap opera and you, you mimic that perfectly. And it was lit differently. Yes. yes. Completely was, differently. I mean, that was in the script from the beginning too, that mm -hmm. that was just gonna be the tone and mm -hmm. we just supported it. And, um, but it was fun. It was fun to do that. You felt like you were doing two different shows sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah. And Ellie, is it okay to talk about your former life as a oh, very, God. I'm very sorry. premier casting oh, director? I thought you were going to talk about no, no, the stripping no, that I did no. before. <laughs> okay. I'm not going back that good. far. Not that it's far. okay, honey. Oh, okay. Casting, week. casting. Well, that Pandora's box has been opened. No, no, no. You, you, you've cast some very, very prominent comedies on television comedies. And I'm just wondering how was it Friends, to make the trend? Sex in the City. Oh, wow. I'll let Paul do the hype. Paul's a good hype man. <laughs> Thank you. Can you talk about transitioning to directing? Sure. Well, my favorite part of casting was always working with the actors and being on set. Like, I didn't want to go back to my office. I just wanted to hang out and see what everyone was doing and learn about that. So as I was casting, um, I was observing whatever show I was casting. I asked the producers. Did you ask, did you ask a observe. shadow? Yeah. So I shadowed, and then finally I got to a point, I mean, yes, I was lucky enough to work on some shows that became popular, so then I left, I was at, uh, at Warner Brothers, and I left there, and so then if people wanted me to cast their pilot, I would say, sure, as long as I could direct an episode. So I got experience that way. Wow, look at you. Good, yeah, good you know. deal making. <laughs> Negotiating. But then I got opportunities to direct uh, films and and um, lots of other TV shows, and, uh, and learning all the time. Is there a particular form you prefer? Comedy. Comedy. I just, I've done, I mean, I did an Israeli gangster drama, which was great. Didn't have a lot of humor, but it was different. But comedy, there's just something about comedy, you know? On set and um, in the editing room, like through the whole process, there's like a lightness. And, and to make people laugh, it's just the best. So, yeah. Okay, and then let's see, we have a couple audience questions. I want to make sure I get those in. Um, for Jane, what's been the biggest challenge in your career that served a greater purpose of growth? Oh, okay. um, We're getting deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's something about the rejection um, in, in being an actor, especially when you're, you're young and those kinds of things can sting a lot more than when you're older. Um, uh, and I think there was something that my, my uh, desire to do this was so strong, and I'm sure I'm speaking for a lot of people out there and some people up here, uh, that you just figure out how to weather it and roll off your back. Um, so uh, I think uh, not uh, having c a concern about what other people think of me as a performer or an actor and how, how impersonal, I found out how impersonal it is when you don't get a job. It's not like, I don't like you. I, uh, what I found, and I, I think you can probably say this is true, being a casting person, is that when an actor comes into the room, the casting person wants that actor to be the person. Desperately. You really want, you yes. really want to find that person. And um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, there are sadists out there, <laughs> masochists who are, you know, are looking to, you know, but the, not so much in the, the higher echelons, you know, when you, when, it, when the work gets serious and there's real money involved people are looking for you know you're looking for the right person so once I had that shift and I, th I think that uh, that a lot of that rejection in the beginning led to that to where I had to just surrender that and not not worry about it and just let it roll off my back so thank you good question and 
Ellie, I, I'm sure you get asked a lot. When you got asked for advice from aspiring actors, mm -hmm. did you have a few kind of core pieces of advice that you gave them? Or um, cast for auditions? Or yeah, you mean for auditions or being on the set. Besides, keep trying. Yeah. No. Oh, has, have people said that a lot? Really? <laughs> um, no, you haven't heard that. Um, um, when you walk into the room, you can be prepared, but find a way to connect to the material. However it is for you, just make it your own. You know, I'm not saying change the lines, but, but whoever you are, bring that. So when a casting director is watching you and looking at you and seeing you perform, we believe you. So it doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be loud unless that's the show calls for it, but just be honest and bring yourself to it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. And Kate and Paul, I mean, you guys have been working for, well, since you're only in your 20s, I guess it hasn't been that long. <laughs> What do, do you have, do you have any do you have any advice? You've been th you know you've been through it. You've been uh, working for a while. You know I, the only thing I would say is this this whole process and working with these wonderful women I might add, as well as Mandy who's the other creator, creator. I've been surrounded by these talented women, and one of the things that uh, I think was the smartest thing that I ever did was get them all together and choose to do something of my own. Because quite frankly, I wasn't getting hired at the time that we started this. And I wanted to work because I love doing this. So I created my own show. And now I'm getting to talk to you people. So I would say, create something for yourself because it's the best thing. And, and without any attachment to an outcome, because we never thought this is what this would be. We never thought we'd have Jane Just Lynch. trying to get tape we for real. We tape on ourselves, awesome. no joke. And it started with really just a seed of excitement about creating something, and we were so fortunate that it became what it has become thus far. But uh, that would be my advice, is do it. Yeah. It, it. Do it. I just have to ask you, I love that you mentioned working with all these talented women. Is there a marked difference when you're working with predominantly women versus predominantly men? I love women. I think they're, they're, well, I mean. <laughs> we're gonna have to qualify Outside that. Outside the bedroom. I mean. <laughs> Let's I just say he subscribes women. to Deku. I used to love women. <laughs> He's got a couple ex-girlfriends out there. I do have a couple ex-girlfriends, which is funny because we've been out together and run into them. And they're like, Paul, how are you? And she's like. Yeah, they're like super jealous of me, and I'm like, girl. <laughs> you got just because as much I'm a chance gay. as me. <laughs> Some people might not be aware. But right, right. But um, I, I, I love a set full of women. I love it. And men are great, too. Obviously, it's not to say anything against men, but there's something energetically that I feel with women. I was raised by my mother mostly, and I had sisters growing up. So I think that's part of it. But I just love the, the nurturing aspect and smart as a wi all these women are so smart. They keep me on my toes without exception. And, and I, I am so lucky that I'm surrounded by them. Ellie, are you noticing that it's easier to get meetings now? Um, yes, absolutely. I feel like the industry's waking up a little bit. They are, they are. I mean, it's nice that some people felt a lot of resentment, like they had to hire a woman director for certain shows. There's still plenty of people who feel that no, way. There are, you're right, and maybe that won't change, but I, there's a little bit of a shift, and it's like, oh. Well, I feel like Ryan Murphy with the Half Foundation mm -hmm. and with a lot of the diversity programs there that are, are actually of programs. kind of yes. in overdrive. Yes, they're, very, they're being very supportive, and they're just saying, just try, just see what happens. Look, look at some women that are fully capable and, and give them a shot and have it be in a supportive situation and what? Wonder Woman. Exactly. Look. Yes. Yes. And there's also so much content, right? Like, there's room for all of us. It doesn't have to be, I took your job. It's like, there's so many Amen jobs that. out there. Like, That's a great point. Yeah. And minorities. Just, you know, it's the women and minorities. Like, uh, there's enough for everyone. <laughs> right. So go out and create something if you don't have, you know. Well, it's prime time for going out and creating things, yeah. too, when you can literally take your phone and... But I got to say, I was driving down um, Sunset Boulevard after having come from a place where I was watching, uh, it had on mute, uh, the, the, uh, I think it was HBO, what's on HBO, and I realized that I, had, I saw one woman 
in in the HBO clip, and it was a woman in Game of Thrones. The rest of it was all men. Oh yeah. And then driving down Sunset Boulevard, I was looking at the posters, and it's almost all men with guns. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's still it's kind of interesting. It almost feels like it's a, in reaction to, um, uh, not that men want to keep us down, but I think there's something really subconscious about you know holding on to how it's been. I don't even think it's a subconscious. I think for it's, some people it is, and I think for I some think it's it is very conscious. conscious. But that's a yeah. great great point. Yeah. But I think it's always in our best interest to boost other people telling their story, boost mm -hmm. more people telling their stories, the variety of people. Yeah, and I think that's really important, this idea of telling your story, right? Like, Paul and I literally did this to get tape for a reel I to put that. up on Actors Access. That was the reason. And, like, I come to these all the time and sit in the audience, and now, like, this for me is like an absolute dream. I, like, I was just here look, like looking at Jill Soloway being like, I love you, you know? So, like... You, you know, you just keep doing it. It, it. Like, whatever. There's an ebb and flow, but just. And keep did doing you guys it. do a Kickstarter thing for money, or no, did you initially, find a gracious the, benefactor? We found individual gracious benefactors okay. in the very beginning, and uh, which served as a proof of concept. If you guys probably know what I mean by that, and a sizzle reel that was compiled from that that then brought on people like Jane and Same. Ellie, and then we had a, an anonymous benefactor nice. that really loved the show and wanted to be the sole benefactor to fund it. And we were thrilled that they were excited, and of course we took the check and ran to the bank. <laughs> Great gratitude there for damn sure, yes. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get um, somebody else to step up for our yeah. next season. Right, 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 right. And I have to ask, uh, what are some of your dream roles that you haven't played yet? I don't really have any, you know? And it just, it's one of those things that the stuff that rolls in at my feet, even from when I was young and not making any money at this, uh, is, is uh, it's just all just great. Like, um, I couldn't have painted a more interesting, fun character than, than the one Paul handed to me on a silver platter. So I don't, I, I never like had that. I used to sit and go, what would I like to do? And I don't really have that compulsion, that desire to like, what's next? I, I don't have that. Anyone I have that else? about my next meal. You know, I like also, <laughs> in the middle of the one I'm eating, what's next? <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Me too. But I, I don't have that about my, uh, about acting, and that's probably why things have been going swimmingly, because I just don't have that energy on it. Uh, Paul uh, or Kate? Honestly, I have been asked that question a couple of times, and I, I echo her. I, I wish, I try to think like Stanley in Streetcar Named Desire, but I don't want to play <laughs> Stanley. Like Marlon Brando <laughs> nailed it. What the fuck am I going to bring to it? <laughs> So for me, it's like what an original role is actually really exciting to me. So someone that approaches, I don't care how small it is, that, that approaches me with something that it, that's mine, that I get to make my own, that's more exciting to me than redoing another role or having a dream role. So I actually agree with Jane. Wow, I wish I had that point of view. I don't at all. I have like a million things that I would love. Like growing up, I feel like every role that Christina Ricci and, and uh, Natalie Portman got, I was like, I could do that, you know. Um, but honestly, like when I look at roles, I don't have one specifically, but a lot of roles that I see on TV and film that I would like to play are actually played by men because I think men are written better because they're written by men usually. Um, and so, yeah, I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't have an exact one, but I, a lot of times I, see, I walk out of a movie and I go, I could have done that better than, you know, whatever, <laughs> like John Smith, whatever. For all of you, last TV show or movie you saw? Ooh. I just saw The Big Sick. It's great. Oh, good. The what? The Big Sick. Oh, Wind Fantastic. River. Wow. I mean, it's not easy to watch, but I didn't know much going into it, and I, it, it's, it's intense, but it's great. And What's I've, that? it's it, uh, Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen, who I'd never seen, who's an she's Olsen old. sister. Yeah, she's the it's a, yeah. She's the younger one. Oh, she's younger. She's, oh, okay. And she's, she's younger than them, than the babies. And, and Jeremy Renner. <laughs> They're like 42. They're not. They're exactly, they're exactly five years younger than me to the day, June 13th. Not so that they're I stalk 20. Them. All right, Ellie, what have, you, what, have you, what have you watched? Well, I'll tell you. I, I'll tell you what I want to watch immediately, and that is um, Wonder Woman. I have not seen it yet. Shame. I know. I know. Hey, hey, no judgment. No judgment. But I'm literally, I've, I've, 
I'm going to watch it in the next two days because I'm, I've, it's, it's almost like I've heard so much about it and I'm in awe already and I've seen the trailer like 20 times. I'm like, and so that's something I just wanna, I wanna go by myself and I just wanna like soak it in. So that's my Makes sense. plan. Jane, have um, you thought I, of anything? You know there? what, I, I'm a big House of Cards fan and I only watched okay. the first three episodes because what's happening in our real politics is far more fucking interesting <laughs> and crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it has really soured me. <laughs> not, I'm want, not like I hate the show. I just am not compuls, compelled to uh, uh, follow through on it. But uh, the last season of episodes, um, the the British Matt the, LeBlanc the, uh, uh, show on Showtime just, is just is out back. now. I think it's out now. But anyway, it's the fifth. They did it about a year ago. But that I, it's like having a Snickers bar. It's the it's the so satisfying. It's so it's so sweet and so and it's fast and I love it. So I'll probably watch that in one sitting. Shit's Creek. We love Shit's Creek. I don't know. I'm talking like we're a couple. You know what we love? We Thrones. Love. Can I say Game of Thrones? I mean, of course you can say Game, Game of, Thrones. of Thrones. Did did everyone watch Glow on Netflix? That's the other. Oh, oh hi. We have some Glow fans here. Oh yeah. Because that would. <laughs> no. Girl okay. strip. Oh yeah, that was funny. That was funny. Yeah, my friend Yvette Foy wrote on that. She uh, that movie is so funny. If you guys have not seen that, I'm not. I need to see Girl. that. Girl's Girl trip. trip. Tiffany oh. Haddish is in it. I'm not sure. Oh god, you will howl. The poster's terrible. It is, yeah. and it's not like that. That's not. It, it's great. It's made over a hundred million dollars. So oh, we'll let the producers it. know. Oh. Yeah. We'll let the producers know you think that poster is terrible though. Let's so. tweet them. I feel terrible saying this because it's self-congratulatory, but nobody has mentioned it. But I'm uh, nominated for an Emmy for this yes, show. Yes, she is. Oh of course. Hello. I know. Oh, uh, loser. Which, you know, I'm, it, it thrills me, and I hope more people will go on Amazon and watch it. And, um, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. They and Mindy Sterling is probably splitting her vote because she's in two, so and too Lauren bad Lapkus, for her. I mean, come on. Just vote for Jane. <laughs> vote for Jane. We love Jane. Don't we love Jane? <laughs> okay, I don't need it. It's fine. We love Jane. Thank you, and I love you all. Is the show available now? Yeah. It's the already dropped? up now on, yeah, on Amazon. Yes. Uh, okay. iTunes, Google Play, Google Play, iTunes. You can also go to droppingthesoap.com, and there's a link to every single streaming service there. Oh, is the, oh I thought you meant it was like for free on Oh, well, I mean, it's yeah. free on Amazon if you have Amazon, but yes. Yeah, if you have Amazon Prime, it's, uh, it's free. Just watch it however, and yeah, then, yeah. you know, if you like it, post a fabulous review. Five stars. And if you don't... Yeah, give us a, give us a review. <laughs> that would be very nice. You can share it anyway, even if you don't A good like review. It. You know, someone wrote, like, a crappy review and oh, with yeah. one star, and it took our number, and it went, tanked it. Yeah, you know, so, we, we yeah, got, yeah. And I, I almost tweeted this review, because we, we got a review where someone said, it's not funny, I'd rather peel off my toenails. And I thought, Whoa. that's fucking hilarious. I'm going to tweet that. And dropped our number. And that's not Want to peel off your toenails? He's writing Watch our show. season two. So we're going to need some five stars to make up for that. You guys are very good sports. I probably shouldn't have mentioned that, should I? <laughs> I don't care. But he also was on all the other sites, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's he done also it was to a, a lot of other... That's the thing yeah. about the internet, too, is you yeah. get to feel so important. You know, your, your bad review can sink the, you know, the rating of somebody's show, which... That, make, that, that gets you off, I guess. That is power, though. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is, not, uh, that yeah. is not something to aspire to. It's your power to. for good. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Power exactly. for good. Like Wonder Woman. And like what? <laughs> tonight. Look at you guys with the call back. <laughs> <laughs> um, did we have any other questions? In the back, please. I was going to ask how many shooting days we have. 16. Wow. Whoa. Actually, we had 16, oh, didn't, and then we had two extra on the end. Whoa. No, no, no. We yeah. had 16, and there was like a, a couple of hours where we actually shot the pool stuff before we started uh, production. That was in a friend's black bottom pool. Oh, you haven't seen that? No. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> Shipwrecked storyline. But yeah, so 16, 16 and a half. Wow, that is fast. Wow. I'm sorry, you had a question right here? 100 minutes of content. Um, I, it's a great question. Atwater Village Theater is a theater complex in Atwater Village that Tim Wright, who is the artistic director of Circle X Theater, which is a great theater company in town, uh, he also plays Frank, the stage manager in Dropping the Soap. He and I are friends, and I had seen uh, a play there and done a reading, and I said, could we shoot here? And he was like, yeah, let's work it out. He was in the reading that we all met in. 
Yeah, and he was part of the reading where we actually met. And so we uh, paid them some money, which was a really fair, uh, fair deal, I must say. And we took over for about six weeks. We built all of those sets. It's literally like black wow. cinder block rooms. What kind of sets are those, Paul? They're shotguns. Yes, shotguns. Shotgun. I learned that he loves word, that. so I tried to use it as much as I could. Like, are they going to be industry, shot- They're terms. making fun of me, is what I'm saying. <laughs> These women that I said I loved so much are roasting my ass. Um, but so we literally took over and our production designer, Chris Allison, built these amazing sets, everything from scratch. If you could see the space before, you'd be shocked. And then basically had our own studio wow. for like a month where we just had run of the place and it was amazing. Well, I can't wait to watch the rest of it. Everybody, a warm hand for everyone from dropping this out. Thank you very much. Thank you.